You're well known for making controversial statements. Detail your process for vetting and fact checking your statements that you make in public and post social media. Can you tell me what's controversial controversial about defending this, the freedom of speech or what's controversial about um, defending our border or saying we need to, what, can you tell me, give me an example? No, you do this every time we have a debate where you a I ask a, a question that's obvious and you're like, what you mean? You were kicked off of your committees for saying things were controversial. You've apologized for controversial statements, right? Those types of things. What is your process for fact checking and vetting the things that you say in public? Well, folks, it's a day ending in Y and you know what that means. Georgia Congresswoman and QAnon supporter Marjorie Taylor Greene is at it again. And yeah, you heard her correctly. In her most recent debate, Green denied she'd ever said anything controversial. And yeah, you bet there's more. The, the things I say in public are the truth, and that's why they're so offensive to Democrat activists in the media just like you. And you're asking me a blanket question with no example. I stand by the things that I say. I stand by saying that we need to secure our border, that we need to protect all of our freedoms and our rights, that we need to stop the America last Democrat communist policies that are destroying our country. I stand by the words that I say they're just offensive to Washington, D.C. and the swamp creatures there. Green says she stands by everything she's ever said. And if people get offended, well, that's just because they can't handle her truth bombs. So now is a good time to look back at some of the things Marjorie Taylor Greene has actually said, and which she now says she stands behind 100%. Back in May of last year, Congresswoman Greene took to the airwaves to let the American people know just how much she hated having to wear a mask at work. And Greene didn't just blast Democrats for their mask requirements. In an interview with the right-wing network Real America's Voice, she compared mask mandates to the Holocaust. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Now that little turn of phrase really upset, well, Almost everybody, even her fellow Republicans, called her out. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy called Green's comments appalling, even though he refused to support any disciplinary measures against her. Mitch McConnell slammed Green for her, quote, frequent outbursts that are absolutely outrageous and reprehensible. Yeah, that seems right. And despite what Green says now, at the time, she was quick to issue a formal apology. She accepted an invitation to the Holocaust Museum, where she learned about why it might be a little inappropriate to compare the deaths of six million Jews to wearing masks. And then, only a few weeks after her apology, Green again compared COVID relief efforts to the Nazi regime. And that wasn't even the last time Green made a comparison to the Nazis. Earlier this year, Green was unsurprisingly back on her Nazi kick. But this time, she compared House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the head of the Gestapo, or as she called it, the gazpacho. Watch this mess. Not only do we have the D.C. jail, which is the D.C. gulag, but now we have Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police spying on members of Congress, spying on the legislative work that we do, spying on our staff, and spying on American citizens that want to come talk to their representatives. Just to clarify, the Gestapo were the Nazi regime's ruthless secret police. Gazpacho is a cold vegetable soup. And to further clarify, Nancy Pelosi does not have secret police roaming the halls of the Capitol, though it's unclear what her opinions are on gazpacho. So let's move on from Green's encyclopedia of Nazi comparisons and take another area where the Georgia Congresswoman is spreading delusional lies, the 2020 election. Green insists that Democrats stole the election for Joe Biden, and she's called the jailed January 6th insurrectionists political prisoners. But Green didn't like when her opponent brought that up at the debate. It's your I turn. To but I need a rebuttal to that. Uh, you cannot accuse me of insurrection. I was a victim of the January 6th riot just as much as any other member of Congress. That was the third day I had on the job. I had nothing to do with what happened there that day. And I will not have you accuse me of that. 
That is wrong of you to do. You're lying about me, and you will not defame my character in that manner. Did Joe Biden win the election, Congresswoman Green? Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Absolutely, Marcus. but you pushed a big lie that said he did not win the election. There was and election fraud. You drove those proven. people to the Capitol fraud. on January 6th with fraud. your lie. Election. We're going to move on. Josh Rowe, it's election your turn fraud. to ask and my the question to has Marjorie proof of Taylor. It. Well, her soon to be ex husband, anyway. And yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene really said that she was the real victim of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. I can't even say it with a straight face. And well, she says Joe Biden is actually the president now, she's unwilling to say that he got there fairly. Greene has raised a lot of money from people who think the 2020 election was stolen. Backpedaling now would be career suicide. All this yelling about Nazis and gazpacho and stolen elections may make Marjorie Taylor Greene a punchline for the normies, but with the GOP, she's never been more powerful. Far from distancing themselves, the GOP has embraced her as one of their leading spokespeople. And as the New York Times reports, Greene is a perfect reminder that Trumpism will not go away, even if Trump does. That's a big reason why Greene felt comfortable threatening Republican leader Kevin McCarthy this week. She warned McCarthy that the Republican base would be, quote, unhappy if McCarthy didn't do what she said. And what does Greene say? In her words, she wants a lot more power and a lot of leeway, which raises a concerning question. Power and leeway to do what? Green gave us a teaser of what she wanted to do with all that power and leeway in her remarks at the debate. And spoiler, it involves protecting kids from Democrat-led castration? Kids need to grow up. They do not need to have mastectomies, castration, or take dangerous drugs that have serious health con consequences. Marcus Flowers represents the Democrat Party, and the Democrat Party is the party of child abuse. And we have to stand up and stop it right now. To protect children, we protect them from making serious mistakes that will last a lifetime. The same mistakes and regrets that many, many D-trans people extreme, have right now. Extreme examples and time. lies is what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing. With election day less than a month away, Democrats will need to hold on to their slim majority in the House, or else Marjorie Taylor Greene will bully her way into the Republican leadership. And when she does, She'll inflict her dangerous conspiracy theories on all of us with terrible consequences for our democracy. Georgia voters, we're counting on you. If you made it to the end, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. And leave a comment below so you can let me know what non-Marjorie Taylor Greene story I should cover next.